Republican House members on Thursday erupted in heated opposition after Representative Mondre Jones condemned their objections to Washington, D.C. statehood as racist trash during a speech on the chamber floor. I've had enough of my colleagues' racist insinuations that somehow the people of Washington, D.C. are incapable or even unworthy of our democracy. Jones, a progressive first-term lawmaker, said, let me see if I can go down here, his, colleague, his comments triggered an uproar from Republicans on the floor. The truth is there's no good faith argument for disenfranchising 700,000 people, most of whom are people of color. Jones continued as GOP lawmakers called for a point of order. Representative Andy Harris asked for Jones to agree to have his remarks stricken from the congressional record. Harris said in a statement to Forbes that Jones' statement was unbecoming of a representative and violates the rules of the House, particularly at a time of growing discord and claims Jones realized his words were inappropriate. After some heated back and forth, Jones, according to Forbes, consented to withdraw the comments from the record and continued with his speech, saying that the GOP's desperate objections are about fear. Fear that in D.C. their white supremacist politics will no longer play, he added. Fear that soon enough white supremacist politics won't work anywhere in America. Fear that if they don't rig our democracy, they won't win. D.C., whose population is just under 50% black, carries three electoral votes in presidential elections, but is not represented in the Senate and its House delegate. Eleanor Holmes Norton cannot vote on legislation. So that's the House delegate they have. Jones' comments were objecting to remarks from Republican Senator Tom Cotton, who said that granting statehood would prevent the nation's capital from being a well-rounded, working-class state. I had no idea there were so many syllables in the word white jones who is black said in response to the cotton they said to the cotton's comments like cotton's a, a thing the cotton's comments he also took a swipe at representative jody heiss after he said that if dc became a state it would be the only one without an airport without a car dealership without a capital city and without a landfill the district actually has a number of dealerships. My goodness, with all the racist trash my colleagues have brought to this debate, I can see why my colleagues are worried about a place to put it, Jones said. The House ultimately voted 218 to 208 along party lines to approve legislation that would make D.C. the 51st state, sending the bill forward to an uphill climb in the Senate. Republicans fiercely opposed the measure, arguing that Democrats are attempting a power grab because D.C. statehood would likely lead to two more Democratic senator and a Democratic House member, given the district's populate given the district population's political leanings. The Biden White House on Tuesday formally declared its support for the legislation, saying it would provide the residents of the district with long overdue full representation in Congress. Um, I don't think this is about so. African Americans tend to vote for Democrats overwhelmingly. That's like 80 something percent, 90 percent of them that vote for Democrats. But I think this is more about the Republicans being worried of losing more power if DC becomes a state than, uh, you know, them being racist, which I already talked about how I'm so tired of that word because they, everybody gets called to online. But, uh, I've never seen this man before and never heard a story with him in it. And this is just everything they were saying and his responses to it were really hilarious. But it turns out the article was misleading. They, he didn't actually say on the House floor, uh, racist trash. He said something else. So I think it's more so about, you know, them wanting to prevent the Democrats from getting another two seats in the Senate where that's going to make the biggest difference and another House seat. But, you know, it's, I, I really wish people would just, because I don't see who you're winning over but by doing this. You're just going to make the Republican voters angry that you're accusing them of being racist because of them opposing a policy you like. And, you know, it's I, I just don't see what good that accomplishes. I would rather they make the argument of, hey, the Republicans are scared that if they don't, if we have two more seats, uh, we're going to tip things even more in our favor. Because, you know, all states, it's like you can go and look at, uh, I, I hate that website, but you can go to Wikipedia and look and see that 
with regard to each state. They've always had senators from both parties, so it's very unlikely that in the next, in the hypothetical that D.C. became a state 20, 30, 40 years, it's just going to be Democrats getting elected over and over. Because that's what ends up happening. People get sick of one party and they go to the other one. So uh, I think the only place, yeah, I, I always remember that South Dakota is the only state where it's been like 40 years of Republican governors. But most of the time with even the places that lean toward one party, you can still find success in those states to some extent. So even if they can't, if the Republicans can't flip the Senate seats, they can flip a House seat.